it felt like we weren't being dragged down. I don't know. I could understand Anthony that. on Air podcast, uh, back for another episode. Bill Cosby making the huge news today. He was released from prison after his conviction was overturned. We actually have a trio of this type of story because Allison Mack was sentenced and James Franco agreed to a settlement in his sexual misconduct suit. So we'll go through all of those. Plus, we're going to fact check John McAfee and the connection to the Florida condo that collapsed. We're also going to discuss his finances and the United States government's efforts to seize what he had. Bill Gates back in the news for more misconduct at work. We'll talk about that, of course. Um, and uh, we've got some Tucker Carlson, CNN, MSNBC oh ratings. Are we covering through. anybody that's not a scumbag? <laughs> Anyone? I'll wait. Uh, Tell me. QAnon and what they nope. believe they've been seeing uh, in the that whole Trump reflection thing. Did you see that? We'll take a look at it. It's really fun. Oh, boy. The Sopranos movie dropped ah, their trailer. Everybody's upset at Howard Stern, and the Mets have a big announcement as we are on the eve of Bobby Bonilla Day. If you don't know what that is, stay Bobby tuned. Bonilla Day. Frankie C. back in the saddle. How are you, my friend? I'm doing all right. Uh, a little day off. Wasn't too bad. Despite the fact that the audience missed you, uh, uh, hated, uh, didn't miss you at all, I missed you greatly. So oh, thank you. I appreciate that. that. That's very sweet of you. Uh, Bill Cosby, conviction overturned. I got to tell you something. This was a 2020 move. Remember 2020 when everything was just going horrifically wrong for us? Yes. And it was like, what's next? Yeah, this is leftovers from this from 2020. It feels like a little bit of leftovers here. I couldn't believe the news. You sent it to me earlier. You had the scoop today um, that his conviction was overturned. Did not see this coming at all. And on a technicality, it's not even like there was some new evidence found in it. You know, it's because of some technical BS. So a panel of Pennsylvania State Supreme Court judges ruled that there was a vast violation of Cosby's due process rights. And he was criminally charged and convicted a decade after previous a previous prosecutor, excuse me, had declined to prosecute him in order to urge him to sit for a civil deposition instead, which was ultimately used against him in his criminal trial. The panel of judges say in their opinion released today that when former Montgomery County District Attorney Bruce Castor investigated allegations of drugging and rape against Cosby, a woman named Andrea Constand. In 2005, Castor felt that, quote, he would not be able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Cosby did this to Constand. End quote. So basically, in order to not prosecute him, he gave him the deal to get him to just testify in the uh, in the deposition. From so what I understand, he admitted to it. Yeah. In the deposition. That's what Which, I understand. He said, yeah, that he said some cr pretty crazy shit that he did and pretty much fessing up. And all that's thrown out the window now. So because he cut that deal, and listen, I know a lot of people are upset today, and, and they should be upset. But it just, this really illustrates how far we've come in these things because now you see a lot of movement in these cases and in these allegations they are taken a lot more seriously than they were even just 15, 16 years ago. When this prosecutor felt like there's no way I'll get this huge actor comedian, uh, yeah. you know, with just this one person. What I don't understand is did everybody, I mean, Cosby himself, his lawyers, did they all forget about this deal that they cut? No, what, Ten years happened, ago? what happened was is the judge in the case ruled that it could be ad admitted. And they took it to two other appeals and lost. And it was this one that said that, you know, went over and ruled in his favor. And what's amazing is, is this happened this morning and, and like two or three hours later, he was out. He's home. He's home already. Home free. Yeah, he's been home for a few hours now. And it was right out. I mean, I guess once you're, you know, you're declared, 
you know, you're able to be let go. They can't hold you anymore. So you got to be immediately be released. Not like they're going to, ah, we'll let you out tomorrow. No, you got to, you know. Yeah. But which I'm not talking crap. about him, but in any anybody, in, that's anybody I mean. who goes to jail, that must be the most terrifying like hours of your life when you're like almost there. That's kind of what Con Air was all about, right? He was getting out. He was getting released. This and, is it. And, and this monstrosity thing blows up in his face. Like, that's got to be your biggest nightmare. Poor you. Nick Cage. I know. I feel for Nick Cage. What was his name in that movie? It was something silly. I don't even remember. Like Mason or Mergy or something that crazy can't. Nick Cagey name. Yeah. Uh, not only is he out, Frankie C., but he's tweeting already. Oh, good. He tweeted a picture of himself holding his fist up, and he said, I never change my stance nor my story. I have always maintained my innocence. Thank you to all my fans, supporters, and friends who stood by me through this ordeal. Special thanks to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court for upholding the rule of law. But didn't he confess to most of the stuff? I know. It's crazy. It is crazy. I mean, he literally was like, I maintain my innocence. And in that deposition, he was saying all the things that he did. He admitted to a lot of it. I don't know exactly what. He admitted to, but there was some, I, from what I understand, he pretty much confessed. Am we, I wrong? We've entered this weird, bizarre world where it just, nothing really matters that much. At Nothing's like, as cut and dry as you think. I mean, it's just, there could be, he admits it, he, he's in jail already, and a technical, you know, some deal he cut. That everybody, you know, they just keep trying. They keep throwing crap at the wall. He's found guilty by yeah. a jury. He's thrown in jail. And because of some weird deal he cut years ago, I mean, he, they said that he shouldn't have even been, try, you know, he shouldn't have even been put in jail for those two years. That's what they were saying. It, uh, when they re released him, they said that even the two years was unconstitutional, or whatever the, the phrasing was, was not right according to the rule of law because of the, the deal which uh, I don't know man it's not it's rough to see that ha to see this happen it's I mean for someone who did something like this mm -hmm. and I get that he's maintained you know that he wants to say he's innocent everybody has a right to innocent until proven guilty but he was proven guilty I know and that's the thing you you know to, to tweet a statement like this is shut up you got out on a technicality be be thankful that you did you deserve to rot for the rest of your life shut up don't be like i maintain my innocence and this and th no this is not one of those cases you crazy yeah. old bastard i mean he didn't even do that he said i've never changed my stance nor my story no he said he, he confessed right? i mean unless i'm misremembering mm. Wasn't there? He he pretty much laid it out. He said, "This yeah, I'll, I'm gonna agree. You know, this is what happened." Yeah, and here's the thing: I am frankly concerned for Hannibal Burris because I feel like he's one uh -oh. of his first stops out of prison is going to be going after that uh, that gentle soul who who really was the start of all of this. Hannibal Burris was the comedian who on stage said that he was doing this stuff and everybody knew it. And then next thing you know, that clip goes viral and the whole world changed. The whole world yeah. literally changed from this one viral clip. I mean, Hannibal was on stage at some weird, I don't even know where he was, some comedy club somewhere. And he said this, he, I don't even know if it was the first time he ever said it. He could have been, he could have said it a, a bunch of times. I don't even, you know, I don't even really know. Yeah. I mean, and and it, it took off. It went crazy, and then and next thing you know, all of this happened. No, this was a this was a, a snowball effect, I and mean, a good one, because then Great. you know. Do you think he's going to tour? He toured, by the he way. He toured right before he was put in jail. Yeah, right before he was arrested. He was he was touring. He did a he did something at some small place. He had fans. He had people. I can't you know, believe people went out to see him. And yeah, people went there to just scream at him and stuff, which is almost, I mean, less crazy to me, but still kind of on the crazy side that you, you're, still, you're still putting money in his pocket. I know you're going there to make a point, scream at him, you know, rapist and all that stuff. Which, well, you, you know, 
probably outside. You don't have to be inside the place to yell at him. Yeah, because you're still putting money in his pocket by buying a ticket. Yeah, I mean, there, there's, I mean, looking at, I mean, I know Wikipedia isn't the best source for everything, but as soon as you write, I just Googled Cosby Confession. And the first thing that comes up from Wikipedia, I mean, again, it's Wikipedia, so. But it says, in his testimony, Cosby admitted to casual sex involving recreational use of sedative hypnotic methoqualoids. Right, that's what, yeah. A series of young women, and he acknowledged that his dispensing the prescription drug was illegal. Right. That was the, the first thing that comes up. Yeah, so he didn't admit to, you're correct, he didn't admit to, like, roofing, but he admitted to, like, I mean, it's basically roofing. You know, he's just like a bunch of, you know. He doped him up. Yeah, I mean, basically. Yeah. I mean, it's insane, and, and and the amount of like the amount of women that came out. Like, even if we're going to uh, shame these women and why put ten percent, fifteen percent in the lying category, like even if uh, you would agree to that, which I'm not saying I would, you still it was have like an seventy women or something, right? Yeah, there's still an astronomical number of women that you know what I'm saying. It's crazy. And this guy is walking free right now, getting ready for a tour. I, it's insane to me. It yeah. really is insane. I don't understand. I mean, it was a whole thing where he, they used some testimony that shouldn't have been allowed or something, right? Yeah, well, that, that was the deposition, yeah. Right, but why, why, why wouldn't it be allowed? Is because question. he only agreed to give the deposition if that was his deal. I'll give you this deposition in civil in the civil courts. If you don't criminally prosecute me, and that was what the prosecutor thought. A lot of people are going to be mad at this prosecutor, and and maybe rightfully so. But it was a different world back then. The guy did what he thought he could do in order to give this that particular victim some sort of closure, some you know whatever, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know, it's just it's crazy. Things were crazier back then the none of these things were taken seriously these women were called money grubbing whores all the time all the time and and the scariest thing in the world is it turns out that you know this was not only happening with cosby but a lot of other people in a lot of other places yeah in Weinstein, hollywood big one here's he the down. here's the scary part too there's a picture of me and this man frank somewhere that i'm going to have to ellie kemper apologize for one day there's a picture with him with a lot of people before anybody knew anything. Well, we're all going to have to apologize before the, the liberal Twitter. I'm telling you, they're going to dig it up. Okay. So what were you doing hanging out with Cosby? I did. We, we promoted a show of his when I was on radio. And I got to go backstage and meet him. I was I'm, At the time. Before At the time, of course, he was this, a legend. Not knowing any of it, it was one of the highlights of my life. Going, you know, I told you this story. They took me backstage. They were like, "Do you you know? Do you want to meet? You know? Do you want to meet? Do you want to meet Mr. Cosby? Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, who wouldn't at that time? Swept me backstage. He was in his dressing room. They said, "Mr. Cosby, this is Ant. He was promoting the show, and he looked up at me and he goes, "Did he sell it out?" And uh, I laughed. Everybody laughed in the room, you know, because like he doesn't need help selling a show. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we got we took a picture. And, you know, feels weird. I would imagine so. So I'm going to have to apologize for that. Where is that picture now? I will never tell you. Okay, I'll find it. I gave it to John McAfee for safekeeping. Oh, good. That should be so, fine then. Another no, reason uh, to be concerned it's going to come I wouldn't out. worry. He's got, I hear, some antivirus thing that nobody can get through, so you'll be fine. Uh, also, I want to point this out. And, and, I, and I, I could tell you where... You in your underwear? You and I... No, I got... Uh, oh, right. Look like, looked like underwear. Okay, just making sure. Giving the ladies a little thrill here. Uh, the ladies and some of the guys. Um, when I could tell you're going to be annoyed with me, but this is the truth. These are facts. Oh, yeah. When Trump was president, we were putting people like Bill Cosby behind bars. Now that Biden is president, it feels like people like Bill Cosby get to roam free. Am I wrong? It's all connected, man. I'm sure. I mean, when, when Trump was president, was Bill Cosby behind bars? He was. Okay. Where's yes. Bill Cosby now that Biden is president? He's not, he's not behind bars anymore. Thank you. That's, That's the first point. time you were honest on this show, and I feel like all the people who hate you will, will really, they're going to love this new side of you. That's good. The honest, Frank. It. 
Hey, coincidences are coincidences. That's all it is, baby. What are you gonna do? <laughs> this it was is a not different a world two years... years ago. What? It's a different world two years ago. You, you're right. Trump was president. Cosby was in jail. The great now world. Trump's safer not president. World. Cosby's not in jail. I, I don't know, man. I mean, you you can't tell me that them two are not related. Yeah, but I have a feeling you're gonna be. You know, even though he's not in jail. You're going to watch your step around Cosby, whoever's around him. I, t- I immediately, uh, I was by a woman I knew when you texted me the news, and I looked at her and I said, you're going to have to be careful when you go out and watch your drinks. Watch your drinks and your pudding, because you just don't know uh, what he has access to. So is this going to be like the resurgence of Cosby um, impressions? It feels- it feels like Jello Pudding should apologize. To be honest, what was the other one? Kodak, I think, was another one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He had a bunch. Got to put the roofie in the pudding. No, no, not, not good. No, <laughs> don't, don't, there's a lot of people that could do a good Cosby. You ain't one of them. It's a shame <laughs> because I love a good Cosby impression. It's just you couldn't. It became like the Hitler mustache. You just couldn't. It's just, you can't do it now. Can't, it's can't no good. do it. People are going to do it. I, I guarantee it's coming back after oh, this whole thing. It's coming back now. I'm sure it'll be. We're going to see it on Saturday. Oh, Saturday Night oh. Live's off right now, right? Yeah, they're off right now. Yeah. yeah, so. You know, but they're coming. I'm sure there's going to be some bits about this. I was always innocent. I never, <laughs> I never changed my <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I honestly, you know, we we joke and we kid, but I mean, God, these poor women. You, no, they, of course, they, I can't uh, imagine. Feel... I can't imagine what they're what when they heard this news, how they heard it. Oh. I don't know, but it's like you know, two years ago they were like, finally, something's been done, right? And this is kind of this is justice, even though we can't take back what happened. This was a piece of ju- this was some justice, and now and now tech totally account, reversed. Yeah. Two years of a three to ten. I mean, if he had gotten out a year from now, at least the sentence would have been. You think somebody takes a run know. at him? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he's going to up his security. I would imagine. I'm sure he's not. You know. You want to know the truth? It's this. It's the tweet that bothers me the most. Like, don't twist the knife. Like, just lay low. If you're, you know. It's the same Obviously, thing with OJ. Have you heard us talk about OJ once on this podcast? I and he has said some recall. crazy newsworthy shit on Twitter. I refuse to, so, to put him on. Why Cosby and not OJ? It's the story. It, I mean, it's story of the day. This yeah, is the, this is it. You know, it's the biggest story of the day. We got to talk about it. Yeah. But, you know, I, as he goes on and tweets and whatever else, I, I'm we're probably not going to really touch it too much. I mean, I mean, unless he's, what if he comes out and is like, I'm running for president? No, not even that, because I, mean, I don't I don't deal with that stunty bullshit. But, you know, what the thing is, is I found like I, I don't believe you could be charged for the same crime twice. Uh-uh. But I was wondering, and I'm sure we'll find this out as days go by and legal experts chime in. I was you, wondering you if... You can't be convicted of the same crime twice. Right, correct. You can be charged with it twice. Correct. I wonder if other women, different different sort of things, different statutes. Like, I wonder if they're working on something else to put them back. That's, I'm sure they're not just going up. Oh, well. Yeah, right? Like, you can't, yeah. I'm sure there's something brewing. I mean... Yeah. Uh, all right, there's a trio of horseshit to uh, start the show. Let's get into <sighs> Alice and Matt because it's another big story. She was part of the NIX VM sex cult. This is the one with the guy, uh, Rainier, right? She was recruiting people right for uh, Rainier. Um, she was basically the Ghislaine to this uh, Keith Rainier guy who got a 120-year sentence last year. So he's serving that right now. Uh, she just got a three-year sentence, twenty thousand dollar fine, and three a year years. Three years, twenty thousand dollar fine, and a thousand hours of community service. She'll surrender herself on September 29th. I mean, is that low? Do you, do you feel like that's it a little feels, low? It feels it feels a little low. Yeah. It's, I mean, is Galen gonna get three years? It's, well, it's that level. I mean, it may not be to the 
the numbers and the, and the length of time that it took place. No, but you pose a great question. But it's the same it's, kind of thing. It's precedence, right? It's a little precedence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she, for those who are unfamiliar, this Rainier was was doing all these awful things to these women, and she, Allison Mack, she was on what was she on Smallville? Smallville, I think. Yeah. CW show about uh, Superman's uh, teen years, whatever it was. Um, and uh, she was again recruiting people. I, I mean, in the shittiest way possible. She had this like women empowerment group, you know, called DOS, D O S. Um, and that, it turned out it was just a big recruitment for this guy to 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 traffic and take advantage of these girls. Unbelievable. Like, I mean, just I, the I, shittiest. Yeah, really shitty. shitty. Yeah. And the only difference I could see is that she is admitting to all of it and Ghislaine isn't she pled guilty yeah she exactly. pled guilty yeah she even issued statements or whatever she did she said the biggest regret all this stuff it doesn't yeah. excuse what she did but I mean I don't know if that will pleading I'm sure pleading guilty eased her sentence a little bit but that's that seems like a low sentence low sentence yeah but at least he you know at least he got 120 years yeah, and he's gone she's, She's going to go to prison for a while, too. Yeah. Um, James Franco agreed to a $2.2 million settlement in his sexual misconduct suit. Um, this started in October of 2019. You know, it's interesting. Seth Rogen. Oh, what the hell was he on? Drugs. <laughs> might have been. I don't know. If, I think it was might have been Stern. Maybe I forget what show he was on, but they asked him about being friends with James Franco. And he said he hadn't spoken to him since this all kind of came. He said out. he doesn't. And recently, I think like within the last month or so, or two, yeah. he said that he doesn't plan on working with him. Yeah, there's nothing written. You know, there's nothing ten, uh, pending. Yeah, in the future. So it's weird because like you always want to kind of like stand by your buddy, but there's certain things where you kind of you really can't, and it's also telling when your best bud, like. W washes his hands of you because that's like you know that's telling yeah, when, of how when they start jumping ship that's that's a problem for you yeah yeah so uh the lawsuit alleged that um franco and his associates coerced students into performing explicit sex scenes on camera this was in a acting school that he started so again preying on people he's a he's a big hollywood star and he's in a position of power and preying on these poor innocent girls that are looking for their break or to learn and you know hone their craft this and that it's just like that's a shit move you know yeah again on I mean, this this grand scale of judging these pieces of shit you get somebody when there's a position of power it just feels so much more dirty and worse of course and i'm sure there are ways to teach acting that you know that's not the way yeah, so, right. i mean juicing you... them 300 dollars a month 300 dollars a month acting school yeah what a uh, what a scam and, all, and he's paying now they're settling right this is a so they're settling uh because there was a handful of girls so there was two that were like the main driving force in this class class actions it became a class action suit when there became two of them one girl's gonna get 670 grand the other 223 thousand and then the leftover 1.3 million will go into a common fund and the rest of the members of the class can all pull out of out of that so you know uh again it's nice to see some justice here but he's basically just paying some i mean how much could he be worth 100 mil yeah i don't know so what, what was that two percent of his his pay his worth yeah and i you know judging by what like the, the fact that they took it or what they said it like they said it was performing explicit sex scenes on camera I don't know. Like this isn't Cosby. It sounds like it's not obviously it's not the same drugging alley. them. Yeah, and, but he's and I, and I don't even know how much. I don't know if, if there was even contact because I think if there's well, if there's explicit sex scenes, that's the word explicit kind of. Yeah, but I think he was kind of just making them get naked because it says that he would also well, even the that ones, the ones who got naked would get preferential treatment. I don't know if he was forcing uh, himself on them. Is what I'm saying. I don't know if he was doing. 
some of the other wrong things. Not that this isn't wrong. This is wrong. I'm just saying I think this is why this isn't a, a, a criminal jail thing and, yeah. and more of Because they consented suit. to it, but it was still... Under, right. Not, yeah, right. not cool. It's right. still very creepy and gross and disgusting and Quite. terrible. Quite. Consensual, but not still not good. Still not great. You know, still not You're great. still taking advantage of, you know... Teacher, student, not good. Uh, pulling this crap in the guise of, of being a teacher. It's no, 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 no. No. So much creep. Uh, let's fact check the McAfee and the uh, condo unit in Florida. It's amazing to me, Frank, how fast this stuff is spreading across the internet. I didn't even now. hear this. What, what is this? I'm telling you, I heard this a thousand times in comments over the last couple of episodes of the podcast. I've seen people tweeting about it. People so what, I mean, uh, that John McAfee had something to do with the condo that collapsed? Not that he caused the condo to collapse, but that he had an um, apartment there. There was a rumor that his son had an apartment there. Oh, they, in an effort to like destroy stuff. Somebody, yeah. So basically, basically, the theory became that the government or whatever entity uh, took the building down in order to destroy whatever Mac, like McAfee was hiding a hard drive there. There's a lot of this stuff ever since the building Like it, it's like the building collapsed and this just started like five minutes later. It was, uh, it's amazing to me. Amazing. Well, I, feel, I feel like this is easily. Fact checkable, right? Did he have an apartment there? That's pretty easy to to run, no. no? And the thing is, is like, so I have, I hadn't, we weren't really talking about it. I didn't say anything on it at last show, even though people were really, really talking about it uh, by the time we did the last episode of the podcast. Um, because I was like, like you just said, like if this is true, we are we're gonna find out. Like, I, I, yeah, it's gonna come out. This is not exactly something you can really hide and cover up. And not only that, I don't know if a building collapse, if that's the plan, would destroy, you know, it's not like everything would be destroyed. Right. You could still get salvage whatever's in there, I'm sure. A hard drive could survive a building. Could survive. It's, it's not an collapse. absolute, right, yeah. It's, it, didn't, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Right, plus all the people that you know, were in the building that, I mean, they could have just went to the into the apartment and destroy the apartment yeah i don't know uh, I, that, again i don't plan these kind of things so i don't know how yeah and it, like exactly like he and he dies one day the next day the thing comes down like so that's that's basically the only connection that you can draw too is that they happen within 24 hours of each other uh, yeah i mean but again it's probably pretty easy to find out if he had a place there if he had a place there yeah so um According to USA Today, you know, people will criticize me for the lame street media. Uh, but they, well, we're not. We don't have our own reporters, so we got to rely on reporters. Um, they're they're saying that the events are un, are completely unrelated. That people just started tweeting about this. Uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. Like I said, that he owned a unit in the building. That there was a thirty-one terabyte uh, drive there of files located on the hard drive. Over there by the building, which I, you know, here's the thing too. This is Seems incredibly like a ri risky place to leave it. This is an incredibly disrespectful thing to do to the these poor people that live there and their families. Disrespectful. It's friggin' murder. You, I don't know how many. I think ninety people. I don't remember how many no, people I'm were saying, trapped like, in there. I'm saying the first person that just started tweeting about the first person that just bl blatantly made this up. Oh yeah, no, that's it's like it's kind of a yeah. shitty, it's kind of a shitty thing. Now, and again, like I said, I hadn't said anything because it's like, all right, if he had it, we'll, we'll find out. If they, you know, if he didn't, we we didn't. But you know, a, it, from, just to start a rumor like that is just it's crazy, and it and it travels. That's the thing. That's the problem. Through the internet. So I tell people this all the time. This we're growing, and I'm so pleased with the growth of this podcast. You know, we could grow five times faster if we didn't give a shit and just spread. I've seen, I've known people who Alex Jones who who put yeah who, who just bankroll millions of followers 
just peddling nonsense garbage and shit because it sounds fascinating and it's conspiracy theories and people get sucked in yeah and you know uh lizard people uh, people are you know it's like yeah people are gonna tune into that because it's entertaining but it, it, you're, that's that's where all the bull crap rumors start and, and you you get the facts are lost in, in all that crap yeah and like we like to play around with conspiracy theories from time yeah, to time but we, but we say that we say we're just Throwing a conspiracy out there. This is no facts. You know, we we warn you that what we're talking about is probably BS. Some of these people just throw it out there, and they you know they act like it's law. So look, as of right now, it's not true. Yeah, if it turned out to be true one day, I wouldn't be surprised. Hey, but you let is. that you let that kind of stuff uh, come to fruition. By the you way, you can't jump to conclusions. Go ahead. They were, they, they just found um, a tourist. Did you see this? She was filming seven minutes before the building collapsed. Water just uh, filling the, the basement, the garage basement area of the building. Seven minutes before. She's next to the building filming going, there's like a lot of water gushing some... through this uh, basement. And then poof, the, the thing came right down. And then her next thing is she's filming literally just all the rubble. So some so is that what they think caused? Yeah, like effed up the foundation and it just again early. But what the yeah, do the know. engineers and stuff those kinds of people just from looking at it, they said it. it this is a uh, foundation thing from the bottom up. Thing. Yeah, I mean, if that kind of that much water saturated the ground under the foundation, yeah, and you don't know, what, maybe that would ha that's what happened. There's these reports that are kind of coming out is that they've been complaining about uh, residents have been complaining about this for years, <sighs> that they've had uh, tons of issues, that they've been telling the owners of the building for years, and the only thing the owners ever did was buy pumps to pump the water out of the basement and oh. they would buy like a new pump every few months or a year or whatever. I mean, there's got to be inspectors, no? People coming in and out to... I, I just found out about the whole pump thing and uh, I'm like, for, now you're talking about like criminal negligence. Like if you knew... Something these, was wrong. If there was some structural issues and you just did not, and you just put band-aids over it and now all these people are dead, you're in fucking trouble. I don't know how you'd sleep at night. I mean, the best case scenario, you're like, oh, it, it didn't look like much. It looked like just a water leak, so I pumped it out. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure maybe they didn't know anything about construction. I'm sure if you're a landlord, you own the building, you don't know that this water could be damaging. I'm Again, devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe you don't know that this much water could be effing up the structure of the building. Right. No, of course. But at some point in year yeah, five, you got to go like, uh Oh, I bought pumps. It'll pump it out. It's like, mm, you can't, it's again, a band-aid. You don't want to mess with with people, you know, that's... You can't cut corners with Don't cut corners. Things, you know? It doesn't pay. You just can't cut corners with certain things. No. Uh, I thought we had, because uh, a lot of people don't know this, but Frank, we have a structural engineer expert on the podcast, and that's Jay Stabs, but I don't know where she went. She was here. I'm here. And now it's a black abyss hmm. you can't hear me I no we hear you. you i can't see you we have no no video that's weird yeah can you see us just went out i can see you yeah nothing. oh wait did you see that i, I saw did jay that. yeah we have nothing we have no video i saw you when you first came in the the green room and then i lost you check the top of the screen is, is the camera button lit up i mean is it red i can't see i can't see that Okay. Okay, hold on a minute. Want me to come yeah, back in? Yeah, pop it out, pop it back in. That's what she said. Oh, hey -os. All right, we're working on getting our structural engineer back. Uh, but there was another report, too, that was uh, basically talking about... Um, there she is. Hey! There's She's back. Structural engineer. We got you. Well, I do want to say one thing. Yes. So, we all lived in a neighborhood where would we ever think that the houses would just collapse? And they did because of Sandy. Like, no one ever uh -oh. thought that would ever happen. And it did. Like, you know, like, 
things that, that things that happen to houses I never thought would ever happen, which I'm sure they did too. Well, yeah. Sandy was, you know, I mean, you had, a hurricane, but you had 12 foot high water yeah. going up the street. You know, a hurricane it just didn't stop. That was that was a storm. That was a, an insane storm. This was apparently just some kind of big water leak inside the building in the basement of the building that we don't know. We're speculating that this was a cause, but apparently no, I know. I'm not saying I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like like you're playing devil's advocate. Maybe this guy just never thought that this would ever happen. Oh, that it could possibly yeah. have, like a whole yeah. building would actually yeah. come down. Yeah. yeah. Because you hate to think that he he's like ah this building could come down but yeah what am I gonna do? No, you're right because we don't think you think concrete metal and everything it's gonna stand up forever. That's only uh, I don't know how many floors it was, but it wasn't you you know a skyscraper? No, yeah, it wasn't. You're right. You're so right. Maybe he didn't th- you know a water leak, a pipe broke. I'm gonna just well pump it out. To both of your points, they 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 changed the building codes in Manhattan. Yeah. And the next day we got these huge thin ass skyscrapers that are going higher. There's more anything. of them every freaking day. What are those things? They're just popping up like crazy. They're building them all around Central Park and it's kind of like like I understand we've advanced in technology, but you still like a part of you's got to be like this is a little too much. Those buildings look like they're 5 feet wide. And a million feet tall, and I'm like, is it really? Uh, I haven't seen them. Yeah, you haven't. Seen, yeah, there's like, I think there's three or four now, and there's going to be like ten before the next uh, three years go by. And they look like, from afar, they look like they're taller than the Empire State Building. Really? Yeah. I don't know if that's the case, but I think some of them are. They're relatively on the same avenue, give or take a block, and they look like they're way taller. And you got to see who's the guy on Million Dollar Listing, the guy. The oh. Ryan something. I want to say Ryan Seacrest. It's not Seacrest. Oh, God. It was probably because he does every fucking thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever his name is. The, the million dollar listing guy. He went up to the top of one of these buildings and they were like at the top floor. And I got to tell you something like it. And I, you know, we've all been to the Rockefeller. We've all been to the observatory. There was something about. I've never been there. The height of this. Uh-uh. thing that i'm like i don't know if i could be comfortable no it's a beautiful it's a gorgeous view to look at on a video was i'm gorgeous. sure the view is breathtaking however but living there and if anybody knows who's ever been in a building in manhattan i don't care how big the building is there are times where you will feel the building move, move. oh yeah yep. on a windy day that thing rocks you know back and forth it, t- it has to structurally they make it so that it can yeah. do that which is so but, weird, but yeah. To witness, to be standing inside a cement structure that's moving like that, and you're a thousand feet in the air, that's, I mean, I'm not terrified of heights, but that's that's freaky. I was at CVS FM at the time, and we were, I don't even know what floor we were on. We were not near the top, but we were midway through one of the buildings in Times Square. So they weren't huge, huge, not the biggest buildings. But that building was swaying one day. Like three people left. They're like, I can't take this. Really? You're, you're literally sitting at your desk and you're literally, you just, you just, yeah. It's, just, it's freaking weird, man. Will you ever get stopped on a bridge in traffic and you just feel like the bridge, like going like this? It's, it's incredibly oh. unsettling. Oh, man. That's just, <laughs> I don't know, man. That, that's rough. It gives you the willies. That. Like yeah, that's literally what the willies is. That, oh, it God. does. Um, anyway, uh, there was this report in Bloomberg that they were talking about uh, McAfee's death and the fact that even though he is dead, the U.S. is not going to stop to try and recoup the taxes that he didn't pay for four years from 2014 to 2018. They say it's going to be obviously a lot more difficult, but that any day now you could probably expect a lawsuit in the United States versus the McAfee estate. I guess that makes some kind of sense. I mean, it's still they still owed the money. I guess they stay to pay for it. Optics wise, doesn't really help all the conspiracy no. theories that are going on. No, it on. does not. But uh, I, you know what though, it, it kind of does though because you'd think if it's harder to get the money when he's dead, why would they get it? Why wouldn't they do it when he was alive? Right. They still miss. They're still out the money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So killing him only makes it harder to get the money. Right. Right. 
Right. I mean, I guess they're just worried about the information, though. It's also like an unfavorable position where you have somebody who literally just took their life, and you're like, oh. Yeah, yeah. give me money. No, uh, see you in <laughs> court. Suit. Yeah, I'll exactly. see the rest of you in court. Yeah. Oh, that weaving gri- uh, grieving w- widow. How bad we feel for her. Right. By the way, the court date is. Uh, yeah, don't give me your money. Yeah. Oh, by yeah. the way, you know those taxes he owed. Yeah, now you owe. That's such a rough spot to be in. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a bad phone call to make. Uh, in other news, Bill Gates is still a piece of shit. So happy to see oh, that one. God, there's an- just one after another in this in this episode. Yeah, another former executive. A very gloomy episode. Yeah, Jay Sabs, you missed the Bill Cosby, James Franco. James and... Franco? What the hell happened with James Franco? He uh, settled. He settled. His sexual misconduct suit, two million bucks. <gasps> Couple mil to, you know, the students that he had in his yeah. acting school. Uh, they settled. Former Microsoft executive told uh, the insider that he saw Gates lying on top of a woman at 5 a.m. during a Microsoft retreat in the French Alps ski resort, in a French Alps ski resort in 1988. He said the two were just snuggling, but alleged that the cuddle session occurred the year after Gates started dating his wife-to-be, Melinda. Yeah, we know he had extramarital, and he wasn't even married then, but we know he cheated on her. So this is another example of that. It's ballsy to be doing this in public, at work, it's not like your Jim, the IT guy who works for some company that nobody's ever fucking heard of. You're Bill Gates. Everybody knows you. Everybody's got their eye on you for some reason or another. Yeah. I mean, but here's the thing, though, too. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is no offense to guys. Power through it. This is expected. This what? is ex- I, This is expected with. Um, men in power. It's just like it's just it's just what men are known for, and I don't mean I don't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> How is that possible? How can you say that? The, Forty-two minutes into this episode, where we've discussed Bill Cosby, James Franco, <laughs> Keith was, Rainier. Uh, there was one. There was Allison. What was her name? Mackie or Matt? Yeah, we talked about seven pieces of one shit guys wo- and one one, one woman, like, one confused like, okay. woman. Like, uh, I'm sorry. No, I'm mo- sorry. guys are guys are jerks, but a lot of them aren't. I, a lot of us saying, aren't. I'm not mm. saying that every guy is, but it's just like it's just a thing. Like, it's just like, all right, what about the president of let's say Monster.com? You know what? He's probably cheating on his wife. He probably is banging his secretary. Just bring in his assistant. All right, but let me. That's, let's, that's that's it's like a given. It's like let's drill down know. on this. Is this is that a just guys thing or a people of power thing? Or are you saying that men in power are more likely to than women in power? You, that's what you're saying. Men in power, but you know what? I'm not. Obviously, you know me. I'm not. Well, <laughs> the numbers are in that in that you know in that favor. I mean, I'll that, it's also men more than women. With no problem. Got that? Did you hear that? <laughs> I didn't hear what you said to me. I said, I'll eat a sausage in front of Cuomo with no problem. Like, I'm not crude. <laughs> you know me. So what does that mean? I mean, but Cuomo is one of those guys, right? Guy exactly. Like, like, no offense. Like, it's no surprise to okay. me that these things ha- like. That's not all guys in power. No, it's not all, but like that's what people assume. Like it, it is a thing. It's a stereotype. It, it most definitely is. It's not true all the time, but mm-hmm. you know, it's true a, a too many times. I'd say it's more accepted. Maybe that's nobody what I'm accepts for. it. Like it's more, it's more acceptable. I don't, I don't think acceptable that. is the word you mean. Maybe I think no, you mean that's some word I mean. Usual. You mean, uh. Yeah, it's just is more that what you, you mean? More usual? It's it like just it's happens more with guys. It's more predictable. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When you hear it, oh, guy in power cheats on his wife and is a scumbag. You go, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. This this <laughs> is the this is the ugly old heavy up. woman on American Idol syndrome, where it's like when you hear it, you're like, oh, like that that thing that catches you. Like if you heard, oh, a woman of power did like, you know, was just like molesting dudes that worked for her. You'd be like, oh, that's like, a change of pace than hmm. what we usually hear. Yeah. 
Yeah. And when you hear a guy did it, you're like, oh, right. You wouldn't even Monday. You wouldn't even raise your head. Is yeah, right. that that makes sense. That adds up. Yeah. Like for example, I'll just I'll just say this. Remember the Fidel the Fidelio I told you about? <laughs> the who? Fidelio. Yeah, at on Wall Street. Oh yeah, there was a deli that that was shady and seedy yes. and okay, doing Remember some this? crazy this stuff in the back. Mm -hmm. It's like that was a given thing. Like, oh, the guys went there to relax. Like, yeah, that's that so is, weird. That's so weird to me. It's, I know it's weird. I know, but it it was like, oh, you know, that's what they do. Yeah, that's yeah. Women aren't going to those for the most part, right? Going to right, those places. right. There's no. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. But when you hear that kind of place, it's men going to those places, right? I, I never really have heard, not even like on movies or TV, that women go to a place like that, right? right. That's not a thing. I don't. Maybe it is, and I'm just not aware of it. But I've you never only, hear that. I've actually only heard of one instance of that happening. Real life or in TV? Real or, life. Okay. Real life. You don't have to. Yep. Share anything you don't want to share, but. I'm just saying, it's I never hear of women going to those kinds of places. Right. Oh, is that right? Well, yeah. Right? I mean, TV, movies, it's always the guys go to these. Well, yeah, and, and that's the thing. That's the weird thing. Like, if you look at... Um, and that's another stereotype. If you look at, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, like uh, bridesmaids and shit like that, a little bit more of that humor has kind of come into play, and that's why it's kind of funny, because it's like ironic that like women would behave like men and you know throw like the wild crazy bachelorette party the whatever like bad moms bridesmaids like we're starting to see some of these like comedies and situations come up a bit more mm -hmm. you know because it is kind of like a rare thing but i think this is kind of like scumbaggy too because it's like his wife worked with all these people the year before it's scumbaggy on a lot of levels. And st like, mm -hmm. still fucking did. Like, uh, I, think, I don't think she left the company until they had kids in like 95 or whatever it was. So. Well, you know what, too? Like, you never know what kind of agreement they had. Because there are people out there. There are people, I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. Because I know there are people out there who are like. Do what you can, want. We can have an open marriage. You can do what I, you know, do whatever you want to do. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. But. We're going to have kids and, you know, we're going to paint this picture. Yeah, that's possible. But I haven't heard her say anything like that. And actually, that just reminded me of something, too, because I I know this guy. Uh-oh. I played on the same team as him years ago. And he was married once. He got divorced. He got married again. And he told her. I'm never having a closed marriage ever again. I'm having an open, open, and she agreed to it. And I'm like, even though like, she didn't really want to. Yes. Yep. So to this day. And and not for nothing, like this guy is like nothing, like I'm like nothing to write home about, right? No, he's uh, nothing at, at yeah. all to write home about. And I'm like, what kind of hog do you have in your pants? <laughs> um, I'll never, but, but is Just it kidding, that or that. is it her self esteem? Like, I'll never understand the lack of self esteem. I find this to be so fascinating. The lack of self esteem by some women. When men, it, too. Yeah, but yeah. that, but the thing is, is like men, men should be grateful that anybody spends, like, we are so awful and shitty. Yeah. We should be thankful. <laughs> we okay. should. We should be the ones that have awful self-esteem because we deserve awful self-esteem because we not to, are terrible. Not to quote a, a giant, another piece of work, but there was a bit that Louis C.K. did once. And he's like, I think it's heart disease and men. Men are the like, number one threat to women. <laughs> right. you know, it's like, right. I don't know how women go on dates with men. It's, it's ridiculous. And, and you know what? Him too. His whole thing annoyed me because... yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I mean, I probably, you're probably thinking, I, I don't like him anymore. I don't like what people did to him because there was a whole nother layer of that, which, you know, like, do you really believe it? Well, he said it all. He, he said, he admitted to all of it. But here's the thing with that, with the one instance where he was masturbating in front mm -hmm. of the girl. There were a lot of instances, but go ahead. 
well that one specific one and it's like if you feel uncomfortable then you leave yeah <sighs> but when it's when it's, it's different when it's someone like he didn't i guess he didn't see it this way but when it's someone like uh let's say it's someone you look up to you walk in and it's your hero sitting there and he uses that influence to you know have some kind of weird thrill that position of power a position of power it's that's what it is what i thought it was weird about that though to speak to janine's point is he got lumped in with like uh weinstein and, and a lot of other people that yeah. no he didn't, he didn't did from far, far as i know he didn't abuse anybody physically nobody ever said that yeah right but he did you know mess you know he did some weird shit with you know in front of them and i did hear one one instance where the the girl the, where he was doing it over the phone maybe or whatever and the girls realized it that they were like it wasn't that big of a they, they didn't even give a shit well that's and, what i mean i think i think it, that blew up like and then much. when when it just got swept up into the me too thing like it, then it got all kind of turned around on them but yeah but give I, a shit I, or not i mean there were a couple i'm sure a few of them who really gave oh, a shit didn't, they didn't like it yeah it wasn't like yeah, I'm sure. no i'm not on board with this stop it you know and that's that's where you get in trouble yeah, but frank once you start going i mean it's hard to stop yeah but no means no <laughs> What's weird too is is that you cannot walk through New York City and take a subway without seeing that. I mean, some excuse me, person. right, right here. Point. I'm well, not defending him. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying. If 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 your comparison is public subway masturbators, then then I don't know where we go from here. I mean, if that's if that's your defense, <laughs> well, people do it on the subway all the time. Why can't I do it in the privacy of a he, back room of yeah, a comedy I mean, store? Obviously, if people felt uncomfortable and they told him and he's like, still did it. That's a different story. But yeah. some of these women didn't even say anything. And it's like... Because well, they were... Yeah. I gonna, know, but like you, then you, you have to... You can't blame them for it. I, it's also one of those weird kink things to me where it's like, this is your thing? It's a weird thing. <laughs> like, that's your fucking thing? Like if you want to do that with someone, like your girlfriend or your wife or whatever... <gasps> Go oh, nuts. Sorry. But if it's someone who has no idea that it's happening, it's like, whoa, you know. Yeah. You can't, you got to run that by My people first. Me. That's something you got to run by the other person. But it's also one of those things where you just, you just take your shot. Like if that, you know, like it's just but, like, uh, like you want, no, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it's, it's a more severe version of, do you want to come up for coffee? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, like he honestly, literally. Like, like, yeah, but there's an implication there. I don't know. I kind of feel like if, I don't feel like it's really that big of a deal. Like if he you just started doing it, right? But then, <laughs> if someone, if, I don't know, if you just want to see if the girl likes it, then why not? You ask or you bring it up somehow, but you don't just start Anthony, going. Anthony's like, maybe this is one of Janine's cases. No, because she's just like, that's not a big deal. You don't well, just no, you, you try to pee in front of everybody. We know about that. That's one. true. You don't just start going at it right in front of you know. That's. I feel like that's public rule number one. Don't that, whip it out. That's what bothers me. Again, no man. I mean, there are very few. I mean, you're talking about a handful of men in the history of men. Handful. Pun intended. Yeah, exactly. I just said handful. That, handful. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that that are are were like, you know, I don't know the Brad Pitts or the uh, that a woman might want to see right you bald even then old son of a bitch you think that pe like no even a woman that is attracted to a louis ck which i can't even fucking imagine <laughs> even a woman that is attracted to them is gotta be like you've got some fucking balls trying this he's like, like that he's probably like thanks do <laughs> <laughs> you see the rest <laughs> No, but I was saying, like, this, this idea of... Well, let me ask you a question. Do you think that I think he's attractive? No. Louis C.K.? Yeah, like, do you think that he's something I would go for? No. I have a hard time believing that anybody would be attracted to him. He's a... Any, he, why, any, are you? I don't even think dogs would like to go around him, to be honest. There's something about his depression that's kind of sexy. I'm not going to lie. I'm befuddled. Man. <laughs> I'm fucking befuddled. It's the difference... Anthony, it's the difference between men and women. Women aren't just attracted to the physical; they go with everything. You know, they, no, in, I like right. No. It's not the physical. Let me translate what Frank just said. Women are broken. 
Let's just yeah, leave it. I did not Women say that. Women are fucking crazy. That is this way. And there is no rule to their madness. And this way. Yeah. I don't know. Look, look, it gives me hope, right? I mean, I, you know, I, I know what percentage of good-looking men I fall in, you know. Uh, so for anybody to be like, oh, that Louis C.K. is kind of, then I'm like, oh, okay, you know, then maybe I got a shot at something here. There's um, someone for everyone. Well, that seems to be true. But, yes, but yeah. in my see, this is how I feel, Janine. I feel, like, and I would love to get Frank's opinion on this. I would love to know what Frank's opinion is. But if I had to gather, judging how beautiful a lot of women are, and how fucking disgusting men are, <laughs> I would say eighty to eighty-five percent of women are settling. That's to me. That's your standard across the uh, across the wait, board wait, wait, rate. Wait. Settling with like as far as what like. Not that they can't with. get it. Not that they can't get someone. Meaning that there's no one to get. They're, they're kind of like eh, <laughs> there's no I one guess, around. I like, guess I guess this guy. I got the you know, he's the best out of all my options in the in the area. Yeah, this guy. There's no you know. I'm not. I never thought of it that way. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, Frank's wife <laughs> settled. My wife definitely Big settled. Big I time. feel like Janine settled. I feel like I don't even know if Janine had a chance to settle. She, you settled way too early. You got in a little like early. Way but too early. He's a guy's a good guy. Like, I, a good guy. Out of all my closest friends, I can't think of one woman that didn't fucking settle. I mean, honest to God. And yeah, some settled have... a little harder than others. I'm not going to mention names. I kind of feel bad for the girls in our group because out of all of us, there's no guy who's like, you know, tearing and, up the red carpet. I say this because any girl could go out, could walk into the middle of a street and be like, I'm single and have four or five suitors. Have four or five guys step up and be like, I'd yeah, like to what, take you out. What kind of caliber suitor are we talking about? Maybe not great, but there's still chance. options. Whereas most men could walk into the middle of the street and be like, I'm single and nobody would fucking look up. In fact, you probably push people in the opposite direction further away from you right yeah. and you want to know why because women are beautiful and men are here that's the difference right we're functional that's all we're we're mules we do the I, hard labor for the most part that's the I'm, I'm very i have to like take this in women that's are ferraris and porsches and men, men are dump trucks. Are jeeps? Yeah, <laughs> garbage trucks. Squared <laughs> off, and you. If you get stuck somewhere, guess the what's going to work better? Do you We're that really help truck on way. the highway? Like, do you really think this way? There are guys. I'm no. I'm sure women are Let attracted me tell you to something. guys. This is science. This isn't even a theory. This, this is, is Anthony you, science. I want you to put this statement in our group chat. No, and who I, agrees with you? I want to see who agrees with you. There are there are women who are legitimately attracted. By the way, to this guys. is this is why I have such but, a low opinion of gay men because they should know better. They they <laughs> exactly. should be able to self identify how awful this is. So you have a low opinion of gay people. That's that's my not, favorite that's joke not ever. Good. I it's just not good. I'll never not love that joke. That is always one of my favorites. It's like, don't you know? Yeah, don't you, you should, know? <laughs> you should know. <laughs> what is it? What are you looking at here? You know, it's like <laughs> maybe not here, but. I don't know what you what you're saying. I'm obviously kidding about that, but uh, but uh, no, but I I really do maintain that just men, like and I and what's fascinating. See, this is fascinating too that Janine is having a hard time. Like she's like, I got to think about this when it's kind of like, uh, this is why women have women's self esteem meters are off because it's like you all ha you all should have better options, and you just think, oh, this is like I'm so happy with this guy and. Really, we're like we're all looking at you, going, "What the fuck? You could do so much better." Well, I have like seen that a lot, but like, maybe that's what are it, you though. Doing they, at some point, maybe there's just so many of you that can do better. You all literally, it's musical chairs. It's not, you know, what's my dream scenario here? It's I just I better get a seat, or else I'm going to be on the floor and out of the game. Boom! Some some truth bombs here by uh, by Ant. Dropping big time truth bombs. I don't know. I mean, like, well, Anthony's sum to sum up Anthony's point: men are gross, and women have to just. I mean, for lack of options, they women settle for gross men sometimes. Yeah, so we is. are we are just here, and women are wonderful, beautiful creatures. That's it. That's it. Part. 
Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Bill Bill Gates, case in point. <laughs> Well, yeah. Obviously. What the? Well, the only so, thing is, is he if he didn't have a cent to his name, yeah, would he be? You know, no, nobody no. would pay attention to this guy. No. Not even you, Janine. Come on, stop it. I mean, he is definitely nerdy cute. Like, there's nerdy no... cute. Yes. You think he's cute? Yes. I see what she's saying. Nerdy cute's like a thing. Nerdy, sure. Yeah. But cute, I, I get the whole nerdy cute thing, but I didn't think he was, he was cute. You know, I could. Uh, let know. me ask you about Louis C.K. Because now you got me fast. Is the humor? You said the depression of him. Is what do you mean by that? Like, I don't <laughs> think he's a sad guy. I think well, he's this guy is nerdy cute. Well, that's a bad pick. All right, how about that one? I mean, what are we oh, looking at? Oh yeah. Here? All right, that's a little. Um. So, well, I don't know if you ever watched his show. Yes, I watched. I was a huge fan. I'm still. They were very I don't agree depressing. with what he did. I, I also feel like he's one of those cases where you can forgive him. Oh, yeah. For what he did. Other yeah. people I don't believe are forgivable. A lot of other people. It, what he did was wrong, but I feel like forgivable. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. In this culture, it's got to be forgiveness culture, too. Because if people forgive, and if the victims But forgive, I don't think you could forgive Weinstein. Like, I don't think he's no. worthy of forgiveness. Number one, Why? I don't think he apologized ever. Well, because he no. denied it all, right? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, Louis C.K., I think, apologized. And I don't, I'm not sure, but I think the people involved accepted. I don't know if they accepted it or not. Yeah, it's just weird. Though, Once they like, do, you got it. Then you, the rest of us have got to kind of. He, he came back and started doing like a bit about it. I forget what he was doing a bit about. It was something. It was typical Louis C.K. Like, how could you joke about that thing? Whatever it was. And like Judd Apatow, who I also love, had like this huge problem and like called him out on Twitter and like blew up his spot. And, and like I always I kind of felt like Judd should have known better because he was a working out material. It wasn't like it was like a Louis C.K. show. He was at some club just working material out, trying to figure out if something is funny. And like to take a shot at a guy for that. I, I don't know. I just thought that was a bit. I agree. A bit like, wrong. Come on. Yeah. So come on, have you ever jerked it off in front of someone? We've all been there. Especially you, Frank. I heard about you. Hey, twice since we started today, this show. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to insist on full frames from here on out. <laughs> no more of this you waste don't of see shit. The bottom of mine right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wrapping up Bill Gates, though, this uh, same Microsoft executive said that somebody, somebody mentioned, like, hey, maybe we should have some more diversity, and he screamed at them, are you trying to ruin Microsoft? <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> like, uh, when was this? This was, you know, over the course of, uh, you know, all of his uh, shit. And then he would bully people, which we knew about. But I thought those two new things were Ugh. interesting wrinkles. Um, God. What the? What? What? But not surprising. Yeah, yeah, not at all. Some scumbags, man. Yeah. Um, Tucker Carlson. Here's another one. <laughs> uh oh. What did this asshole say now? He is saying, well, there's a couple, there's two, there's two parts to this story. One is, is that Fox is kicking the ever loving shit out of CNN and MSNBC. Really? Like horrifically. Um, and the thought here is, is that, you know, cause they're going to all the media people now. And basically the thought is, is that they don't have Trump anymore. Oh. And at the height of Trump, the, the, the Trump hate was fueling the CNN and MSNBC ratings because everybody tuned in every night to see what did Trump say today? What did he do today? Right. And they would be there to get that information. Now they don't have that anymore. And you're in a situation where you're, you're getting slaughtered, which goes back to why conspiracy theories go viral on, on social media we actually enjoy being angry more than we enjoy being happy pleased and so this is not an uncommon thing when there's a republican president fox's ratings tend to to slide a little bit when there's a democratic president the other ones tend to slide but this is a bit of a bigger slide than we've seen in the past like they are they are really getting destroyed fox is carrying like 1.2 million uh, viewers over the course of prime time 
where MSNBC is averaging 847,000 and CNN is only averaging 654,000. So Fox is almost doubling up Damn. on CNN. And I was surprised to see that MSNBC was beating CNN because I always felt like MSNBC was CNN's little stepbrother that couldn't. Yeah, you know... I, I thought so too. I always thought they were kind of neck and neck. I see. I never felt that way. I always thought that CNN was was yep. kind of that standard and up on top of things mm. and uh, and whatever the case is. But anyway, Tucker Carlson uh, came out and said that a whistleblower told him that the government is spying on him. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> you don't believe this, Frank? I believe almost nothing that this Wait, asshole can says. I just say the term whistleblower? Come on. Come on. Where did that what? come from? Where did that come from? Well, it's like a referee blows the whistle on on someone that does something wrong in a game. It's the whistleblower. It's the guy who stops the play and and calls out something I that's know, going but, on. But like recent like that's like that's not that recent. I mean, Watergate, does they, whistleblowers. Trendy. Anything, anytime something, something wrong happens, I don't know how far back it goes. I would guess maybe a hundred years or so. As long as there's ref, been refs or umpires, I guess a couple. You know. I just that term. I don't know why. All right, you want to hear from Tucky Tucks? Let's not go. really, but sure. My, my eyes are starting to. Droop. You're starting to stun. Political protesters. The government oh. was spying on. Yesterday, we heard from a whistleblower within the U.S. government who reached out to warn us that the NSA, the National Security Agency, is monitoring our electronic communications and is planning to leak them in an attempt to take this show off the air. Now, that's a shocking claim, and ordinarily we'd be skeptical of it. It's illegal for the NSA to spy on American citizens. It's a crime. It's not a third world country. Things like that should not happen in America. But unfortunately, they do happen, and in this case, they did happen. The whistleblower, who is in a position to know, repeated back to us information about a story that we are working on that could have only come directly from my texts and emails. There's no other possible source for that information, period. The NSA captured that information without our knowledge and did it for political reasons. The Biden administration is spying on us. We have confirmed that. This morning we filed an FOIA request, a Freedom of Information Act request, asking for all, right, all so he, he goes so he goes on and on about it. But so okay, they said the only place they could have gotten it was from his emails and texts. Well, who is he emailing and who is he texting? I mean, they could have gotten it from that end of of things. I mean, it's not just from his phone. It's there's two people well, involved here. There's somebody telling him something, and basically what he's saying is is that person has not told anybody else. So the only possible way um, they could know <coughs> is, if, said... is if they're spying. Now, well, let me say a couple things. Go ahead. Frank could be right and Tucker could be wrong in the sense of maybe it's not Tucker they're spying on. Mm. Maybe they're spying on the person giving Tucker the information. Right. That's a possibility. Another possibility is that... Uh, Tucker's just making this all up. <laughs> That's yeah, another I mean, if you know, if you're texting someone else about a story or you're sending emails, you know, it's not just your email; it's that other person. Yeah, they could be getting it from that end, not just your end. Yeah, you know, so you're texting other people. You're, you know, it's not just your your device; it's wherever those texts and emails are going that could be being monitored. And if they're doing a story on the government then they could spy on the government. You know, they, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be Tucker that they're spying on. Uh, I'm just, it could be the other person. It could be the other That's person. Weird, or right? it, it could be, it could be Tucker. I mean, the thing could is, be. is, we don't know anything. I don't know. We don't know. Could be. The thing but is, is they all, they all stupid. say they don't spy, but we know the Obama administration spied on the, the Trump campaign. We know the Trump administration spied on the the Democrats in uh, it, during the last election. So everybody acts like this shit don't happen, but they're all fucking doing it. It's just, so if they got to take a peek in on on uh, on Tucker, even though it you know it's illegal, uh, basically the Patriot Act and whatever the fuck. So then they, they should sue. Well, if they've they, confirmed it, then they have then they have a case. Well, we're going to find out because, like I said, he, he filed the Freedom of Information Act thing. If it comes out 
if it comes out that he was right, then he was right. You know, if if it, if you never hear anything else about this, then it'll it'll be the it'll prove that he's wrong. But my my friends over in the queue, they're saying that McAfee was Tucker's whistleblower. Oh, that it was McAfee that was feeding him a bunch of information. Burnt. That seems a little too on the nose, though. And that he only said this now because that story that they're working on is kaput because he's, you know. I have a he... feeling McAfee wouldn't go to Fox or CNN or MSNBC. I feel like he wouldn't do the mainstream thing. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know McAfee. Oh, I my head. McAfee. I need some ice cream now. But he was a, he, didn't he run as an independent or something? He a was libertarian. Not libertarian. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't uh, apparently too thrilled with either side, and I don't know. And he could release it on his own thing. He doesn't, I don't think he needed no. mainstream media to release anything. Yeah. You know, he could have just put it out there. Well, we I shall. We shall see for sure. We're, we're going to yeah, find hey, out. Yeah, hey, if Tucker has a case, if they... If they are spying and he's said he's he's got the proof or whatever, bring it to court. Sell it up. Uh, the Q people are also making a lot of noise over the uh, Trump reflection. Did you see this photo? Didn't see this. No. All right, let me pop it up for people that are are watching the podcast, and for my friends that are listening to the podcast, you could always watch this damn thing on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, comes out around the same time. You can do that. That's yeah. true. All right, All right, so let's see what this thing is. Take a look. Uh, let me see. Can you go? Yeah, okay. So let me uh, let me see if I can make this a little bigger for you. There we go. If you All right, so here's a we're looking at a picture of the Oval Office and Biden's on the phone. You see my little uh, cursor there? Can you see the mouse? Yep. Yep. Look over here at this reflection. Tell me that doesn't look like Trump's big square head. Trump does have a square head, and that's close. That reflect, but... reflection kind of looks like Trumpy Trumpkins. Yeah, but his hair's too dark. It seems like Trump's hair was like light blonde. That that hair lo doesn't look Trump hair to me. That looks like some I can't uh, tell other person in the room. It doesn't look like him. Yeah, let me see if I could zoom in for you guys a little bit more. It, it it's a it's a weird. By the way, I think it's just the the way the windows are falling in Biden, but. It, it looks like Biden to me, but I get where they're. Yeah. What you can see the this. phone. You can see the phone on the right side, in his hand. Yeah, it's the back of Biden's head, and, and I guess the the window has some kind of weird bend to it or something that's that's causing his head to look square. But the Q theory, right? The Q theory is is that's Trump. <laughs> the Q theory is, is that here we go. Biden's not in the White House. Trump is. And they put this picture out and Photoshop Biden into the picture and forgot to Photoshop. Oh, I like this. I like this. That's theory. hilarious. If we could only get the Q people to write movies instead right. of this bullshit, I think we would all benefit. Yeah, these, give me some science fiction. They're great stories. Yeah. They're just all not true. It's just so, oh, come on, guys. Yeah. Good Netflix, good Netflix series. I mean, if this was actually Trump, where's the Coca-Cola button? Honestly. Excellent point, Frank. They photoshopped it out. Do oh, your okay. research. I'm up. Oh, you got me. <laughs> and if this was Trump, why are there things on his desk, like work? You know, why would all there right. be papers See, on his desk? Now... Go he back to Trump's button. go back to Trump in his office, in, in the Oval Office. There's rarely anything on his desk. Everybody. Diet Coke button. Everybody said they enjoyed the last show thoroughly because there was no Trump uh, slander. Yep. <laughs> there was. I feel, like, I feel like you jumped on there a little bit. Did I? I don't remember what I said. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't drank a lot show. during the last episode, so it's hard to remember. I don't watch the show, so. <laughs> yeah, me either. Fuck you guys. Can't stand the both of you. Um, one, no, of the most, one of the most exciting things that uh, I'm looking forward to and it popped yesterday via trailer, The Sopranos prequel. Oh, oh man. That does it's, look good. It looks good. You guys saw the trailer? I did. Saw the trailer, yes. And his son, man, looks just like him. I know. It's, it's crazy, right? Amazing. He looks just like him. How much he looks like him. And I got to tell you something. Like, I, it looked good. And I was surprised how much this movie is about the kid. 
Because they tell you like it's set back in in Tony's father's day and the riots oh. and all. I thought it was going to be more about them and like oh, it's, it's Tony was going to be like the tail end of like okay now he's old. I thought he was going to be like the tail end of it. It's, a, it's hard to know. Uh, or is that just another neighborhood guy? I don't really know. I, like, yeah, I'm not sure. There's one. There's a scene where you see um, Paulie, the young Paulie, and you know it's I don't him see him. Where do you you saw him? This. Yes. By the way. How great is this Satriali's like looking back on it where they still got the same tablecloth? Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the show's not that old. They could get the same, you know. You're talking about the fact that they stuck to what it looked like, you know. I'm just saying, like, yeah, they stuck. Yeah, like nothing really changed. Like they yeah. had the same t the table was in the same spot with the same tablecloth 30 years later. Like, I wonder if they're going to have uh, what's his name? Steve Buscemi's character. Uh, Paulie Walnuts. There he is. Yes, that's him. Oh, yeah, because he's the pointing ring. the finger. He always points like this. Oh, wait, what are we? So <laughs> fucking exciting. <laughs> bada bing, bada I have so to watch excited. this series over. I have to. Yeah. How many seasons was it? Six, seven? Six, seven, I don't know. It's up okay. There. And then they had like 6A and 6B towards the end, I think it was. Maybe I can do it. Yeah, oh. That's, that's Paulie Walnuts, apparently. You can and there's, do it. Uh, there's uh, Junior is in there. Yeah, what's weird about that is too in in the in the actual show. This is not spoilers, but in the actual show, you see the they have flashbacks, and so all these yeah. characters are played by other people. So I thought it would be a little weird that it's not those people that are them, but it's not. It, it, but this, it, you got it. It's this is like forty years ago. It's supposed to be. Yeah, and I'll tell you what the the they, the trailer is one of the best trailers I've ever seen because they. They're playing this song throughout, which is a song that they actually played in the series, but it's sung by a different person. And then they end the trailer with the Sopranos theme song. It, that was know, a nice touch. I got chills during that, was that a, good a touch. bit. Boner. I got a, I got a movie boner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, Howard Stern's pissing people off supposedly yesterday or whenever it was. He announced that he was going on yeah. summer vacation. Why is that? So what? Let him go. He's earned it. Because he, he, he just signed an ex he signed a five-year extension at 100 mil a year or a little bit more, they're saying. He's working three days a week. His show is only on three days a week. Yeah. And now he's taking the entire summer off. I mean, yeah, that's kind of... I mean, I mean does my, his contract say he could do that? Yeah, that's what he negotiated right. in his new contract. So then it's his world, man. It's what he wants to do. I wish I could take the summer off like that. <sighs> Me too. Let me tell you. I'd be a teacher. We haven't missed an episode in over a year. I missed one. No, Janine missed one this past yeah, Monday. Yeah. I think we did miss. I one. missed a. F I missed a few. Yeah. Did we miss? It was a holiday. I think we, Memorial Day. We Memorial Day. That was, was the first. Monday. That was the only day we've taken off in in like over a year. Are you trying yeah. to tell us that you're giving us some time off? <laughs> 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 well, I got good news for you. We're going to three days a week, like Stern. So. Oh, you see. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, but people, are, it's so funny too because people are like, "I'm paying nine dollars a month for this shit." It's like it's nine dollars. Yeah. The guy, the guy has been entertaining you for fucking forty years. The guy has earned a couple two months to himself. You're bitching about eighteen dollars. <laughs> I Honestly. mean, to me, that's a little crazy. You learned what the Sibian was from him. Come on. Learned a lot of stuff from him. Uh, I mean, right. yeah. I'm surprised you like him. I used to listen when he was on in New York, when he was on regular radio. I listened all the time, you know, on the way to on the way to school. This was in the '90s, you know. I listened. Yeah, he was on, and it was great. He was I the enjoyed guy. It. He's good. Yeah. yeah, he was the guy. Uh, and uh, my final thing: tomorrow, July first, or some of you might be listening to this on July first is Bobby Bonilla Day. And this is a day that has been celebrated for like the past 15 years. He just, he just put j to sleep. In Mets allure every July 1st because the stupid owners of the Mets 20 years ago were too cheap and they gave money to Bernie Madoff and they thought, oh, we'll make more money than this. Signed Bonilla to a ridiculous contract that basically oh, I do remember this. they deferred his payments and they've been paying this guy over a million dollars every july 1st for the last 20 years they, they was like the sweetest they, deal i forget what it was exactly it was like an eight million dollar contract and they were like what if we defer the payment? we don't pay you now but we'll keep yep. paying up oh, we literally lost j subs she literally got she annoyed. hated this this whole thing hated the topic 
and they were like, oh, like, we'll pay, we'll defer the payments. And they, and they didn't care because they were giving money to Madoff and they were like, the interest, that return we're going to get, we're going to pay off this Bobby Bonilla contract. It's not even going to matter. He'll make a little bit more, but who cares? Because we're making so much more. And these assholes have been paying for years. He how, made how, so much more money off these dopes. How much longer they got? Well, the Mets were just sold, Frank. And this Stephen Cohen has taken over, and suddenly, just hours ago, actually moments ago, they tweeted out, you know what tomorrow is, we have a big announcement. Uh, so I don't know if he's paying this off, which actually kind of makes me sad, because to celebrate the stupidity of the Mets is kind of a rite of, rite of passage. We do that every year. That's, <laughs> that's how we get through the season. Right. Right. It's like we live in America every year, but on July 4th, we make a big deal out of it. We live in misery as Met fans all season long, but on July 1st, we get to make a big... We, that's when we really celebrate it. It's Yeah, we got to you know hoist the stupid flag and be like, hey, that's us. Yeah. So I, I don't know what... I don't know if they agreed to a buyout. I would actually kind of be a little sad if they did. Uh, whatever the case would be, I'm not entirely sure. I think but, they're going to make him head coach. Well, that would be something else. That would You're be going to bring something. them on. It's going to do something weird to the payments or whatever, and then they'll actually get some work out of them. Yeah. Could you imagine making a million a year just just by being? It's like it's the lottery. So you won the lottery. You don't got to do shit, and you get a million dollars every July first. Yeah. It's like it's like if somebody walked up to you and you're like, "What's that?" and they're like, "Oh, I have a million dollar check." I was like, "Wow, you must have had a good year." No, I haven't worked in 14 years. Well, what's that million dollar check for? Well, they're paying me for something I did 14 years ago. Yeah. Oh, and there's more to come. Yeah. I was this like, isn't the last one. one. Next year in the year. <laughs> yeah. You want one? <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got three I haven't even deposited yet. I got money to burn. <laughs> yep. Frank, that was one hell of a show. You got anything else? Do I have anything else? Uh, no, that was a hell of a show. Middle of the week. Let's get to that weekend, baby. No? Big big Fourth of July weekend. I'm excited about it. It's gonna be a good weekend. Are Monday we gonna off. all be together on Fourth of July? Oh, I'm not sure. Are we? I don't know. Are we? I don't even know what I'm doing. We have to check in with the with the bosses. Yeah, you don't know what you're doing. Neither do I. Nope. They'll I think tell we're, us. I think we're gonna be all together on on Fourth hey, of July. Look at that. We got confirmation. Sunday is that Sunday? I think so. All right. Great. Is and we're off Sun Monday. It's Sunday? Are we going to be here Monday doing the show? It's a good question. Thank you. Maybe July we'll 5th. maybe we'll do something impromptu on Sunday. Uh, see don't for, promise something you can't deliver. For Monday. But maybe that'll be our thing. We won't do our normal thing since we'll be all together, we can do a little something something and put it out on Monday. For everybody to enjoy. It's a possibility. That's something. You can't rule it out. No, you can't. We'll reenact the entire Sopranos trailer. Oh, that would be nice. Can we do that? I don't think <laughs> we have the budget would, for that. I would <laughs> love to do that. <laughs> Can I be Paulie Walnut? That's so uh, good. I called it. Yeah. He's, this is like patented. You can't. Yeah. That's how you point if you're Paulie Walnut. And you I used to love it. how he used to stand there like this. Have you ever noticed yeah. that? He would stand like this yeah. all the time. You know why he used to do that? Let's bring in our, our Sopranos uh, oh, expert. Oh, God. Hold on. Yep. Wait, hold Can we on. charge the battery? No, they I have something wrong here. Paul, uh, uh, Tony Sirico, the guy who played Paulie Walnuts, actually did jail time. And he said that he developed this habit because in prison, Kept you always, always had to have your hands up and be ready. So he didn't even realize he was doing it until somebody said to him years later. But if you watch him on the show, he He's always, always like has this. his hands yeah. right here. Really? Like this. Wait, hold yeah. on a minute, because like. Yeah, it's okay, Janine. I don't, Janine, know. I don't not... know what just happened. Got a nice shot of your ceiling, watching. though. Yeah. <laughs> hold on. But that's a patented point. This is the Polly Walnuts. There's no other person that does that. You and get a ring a... on this finger. And hey, <laughs> <and> your point. <laughs> <He's always> a... <laughs> That little thing he used to do all the time. What was his name? Uh, the other guy, the the cousin, Tony Blundetto. No, no, no. Um, Tony's nephew. Oh, Chris Moltisanti. Hey, Chrissy. <laughs> yeah. You know, Chrissy. 
Yeah. What are you doing, J Sebs? I I don't know. I'm trying to fix this thing. We're done with the show, J Sebs. Do you have okay. anything else? <laughs> um Any final thoughts? I'm just gonna be doing this all day. Frank Frank, I do we, we were just thank you. we just wanna hold on a second. We just were thinking that instead of doing a Monday regular show that since if we're all gonna be together for the fourth, we'll do something special there and put it out on Monday and that'll be a little thing that we can like, do. Like blind everybody who's watching. We could do that. <laughs> and then Frank suggested that we reenact the Sopranos uh, trailer, and maybe that'll be the thing. Oh, can I be Adriana? I don't think she's in it. <laughs> that would be so. Well, no, Chris didn't meet her until until but, into the series. Right, yeah, but yeah. she she was uh, Richie Priel's niece or something like that, wasn't she? So she was in that world. Yeah, but she's not as she's not as old as Tony. Tony was a kid in this in this thing. Yeah, she's not going to be. Tony is it? Yeah. yeah. I wonder if the Chris is that like he would be like three or four. You would think if Tony's in high school, it looks like. Yeah, it's his nephew. It could be. He could be a he's, little kid. Because he's know. got what ten years on him or something yep, like that. Something. Maybe a little more. Yeah. Can't wait to see Silvio and. I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. I cannot wait. Carmella, we didn't really when see did Carmella meet? in this. Do we know when they met. They 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 met in high. They knew each other in high school because in. Oh, she's gonna be in it then. In season six, when he has the fight with Bacala, <laughs> he says to her because he says to her, "I you were there in the parking lot when I fought whoever he said." He goes, "And our eyes met." He goes, "I didn't know who you were, but our eyes met, and I could tell you were turned on that I beat this guy oh, up." Oh, really? That's what did he says. She's got to be in it then. There's got to be a character. That scene will probably be in it. If they described it like that, yeah, I bet that scene's in it. How She's the good. hell do you remember this? He remembered. I didn't will you that. jerk off to Sopranos? <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> That's how I get my rocks off. Jake Dubs. <laughs> it's like Louis C.K. when he comes across a young female comic. That's how, I, that's how it is when I put the Sopranos oh, on. Oh! Hey! Yeah. <laughs> this, this, so, Sopranos. We used to watch it with my father-in-law, who has passed on. Mm -hmm. How embarrassing! Oh, uh, when a sex scene comes up, and it was like, you know, I don't know, Tony pounding away on this girl, <laughs> and my father-in-law just like, mm. like, like, a, <laughs> like a like a dying seal. <laughs> Did your father-in-law whip it out and start masturbating? Is that why you're okay with Louis C.K.? Uh, maybe. Frank, are you wearing a Christmas shirt again? Maybe. Yeah, it's time to go. Are you for real? <laughs> no. What does that say? Is that a, is that a that looks like a? What does it say? I don't know. I can't see because it's behind the mic. It's a Christmas shirt, isn't it? What makes you say that? Because <laughs> it's red and green. Because you... it looks it looks like mistletoe. Hey. Smarten up, you. <laughs> it's fucking mistletoe. All right. So okay, none of you that a say, fruitcake. Just, I just want to say this one <laughs> I last can't thing. I can't fucking stand you. I honestly. You've never had fruitcake in the middle of the uh, year? Oh, God. Yes, Janine, your final thought. People who hate National Lampoon's Christmas vacation, I don't really trust them. That's all I'll say. Agreed. Thank you. One Agreed. of us doesn't like Not the three of us, but one of, someone in our group doesn't like it. Like, yeah, and they brought it nice. up the other day, and I was like, yeah, I can't, I can't trust you. Who that is. Isn't that your brother? Frank, you Close. would have known if, if you had stayed for our gathering, but you left three and a half this. hours early. No, that's not what it came up. It came up at the uh, the golf thing. No, it came up It came up at... Oh, because we talked about it on the golf course. Too. Friend, Did friends you really? of ours, we had a gathering on Saturday. We all got together. Frank showed up and stayed for 15 or 20 minutes. and then No, left. I was there for a good four hours. It was not four hours. I got there an hour before every, we got there an hour before you did, and we left three hours after. You see, I don't know about that. I know about that. Frank has this great, great quality where he just kind of looks around at everybody else, especially, especially. I think this is a kid thing. He's like, he looks around and he goes, "I just can't fucking stand this anymore. I gotta get out of here." And he grabs his wife. I think that's an adult thing. I mean, honestly, I wish I could wife. do that too. So. I mean, we're all envious, but that's besides the point. I, I go, listen, I've had it. 
<laughs> be honest. And I'm leaving. Because I know everybody thinks you're such a sweetheart. And I know I bust your balls about Was you. anybody's feelings hurt? Uh, no. Then what's the problem? But I, but I just, uh, but, but you know, maybe, you know what? I'll, I'm going to say a little bit. I no, just... we wanted to come home because the dog, she, we, he was home for like five hours by himself. We had to go home and take care of the dog, walk her, walk him and everything. Then it was, you know, I don't know if the I end believe of the day, this. we were like, we had, you know, we've eaten. It was, you know, after dinner. And Do we, we were, believe you know, that? It. Do we believe Yeah, that? but it, it was an event with dessert. You exit pre-dessert. And I, I, we brought I, dessert, though. And you brought dessert, too. I didn't we brought get brownies. It. Let's Those talk about this. Really good. Frank's, oh, God. I gotta go. Go ahead. Frank's wife, quickly. Frank's wife brought brownie cookie things. We had literally the greatest cake from, I forgot what, oh, what Oxford Bakery. I got to eat the cake Great and plug. I was like, now, now the hostess was nice enough to give us, send us home with a piece of cake, which was, I was very grateful for. But she didn't stick uh, the brownies. Oh, into I the got package. some. I got yeah. some. Okay, I see asked now for I'm it. even more offended. I got asked. Aren't they I, delish? I actually was like, can I have some of those? Ah, see, she, she spoke up, like an adult. Because well, but here's the thing. I felt like the people who had the gathering opened up their home to us. They were lovely. And I was very grateful. They're in the middle a of a time. a home renovation, and they had. They had us over, which I thought was Wonderful. unnecessary. Wonderful and then people. they literally pissed it all away and threw it all away because they didn't include brownies in my uh, to-go bag. That's what you get. For being Selfish. You, you should have left five hours after you got there. Four hours after you got there. And I put right. in the time, unlike Frank. Well, you know, show up on time next time. But I, but I mean this when I say it. I literally feel like Frank looks around and goes, I'm, I'm tired of these people, and I'm, I'm leaving. And That's I take a little of what happens up here. I don't and then what so. comes out is, all right, got to go. Yeah. I think him and his wife probably have a secret. They have a code word or some kind of sign language. And then they yeah, both it's... annoy that they're annoyed enough to go. Get the hell out of here. That's yeah. a code yeah. word. But I don't no, think it's him. Like I, I they believe it's him. No, we, just, we had to get home to the dog. That's all. No, it's definitely him. It's definitely him. Yeah. All right. At least we can agree on that. All right. it on my dog. It's hurtful nonetheless. It'd be like if we were in the middle of a podcast and you started yawning and being like, okay. <laughs> right. And playing with like, a light and then it's trying hurtful. to get us to, to sign off. I understand. <laughs> Saluting. You know, that kind of thing. This is me being frank leaving early. <laughs> you. Good you. All right. Appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for watching and are listening. Thank you for sharing. We always say that we're growing. We have exploded over the last week and a half, two weeks. It's That's unbelievable how many people are sharing the podcast. Thank you for that. Please keep it up. AnthonyAnair.com has all our merch, links, and info, and we will catch you on the next one. Catch you on the flippity flop, as Michael Scott oh, likes to say. And she's gone. <laughs>